Hello everyone, my name is Dimas Ekonomakos. I'm a solutions architect with Software Edge Government Solutions. Today we are going to discuss the second part of my series on how to use Natural One. This specific module or segment will cover the installation of Natural One and the next module will cover setting up Natural One for use. Our agenda today is looking at the installer, how to create an image from Empower, and then we'll use that image to install Natural One, and we'll cover some best practices on how to do the installation, where to put your files, etc. In the last module, what we spoke about was downloading the installer, uh, where to obtain the installer, and what versions and some best practices surrounding the installer. In this module we're going to be discussing how to create an image using the downloaded installer and then how to use the image to do the actual installation. So it's really a, a two-step two -step process. First step is creating the image from Empower so that you have a downloaded software image, installation image and the second piece is using the installer to actually do the installation. So the first step is start the installer that we've downloaded from Empower. Click on Advanced Options. Then click on the Images tab as you can see highlighted on my screen. Click on the Images tab. Then click the radio button or the checkbox that says Installation Image and then also create image. So what we're doing is we are going into the advanced options telling the installer we want to create an image and then find the location for your downloaded image. In my case I like to locate all my software G installation images on the C drive under SAG images. Uh, you can do whatever you find most convenient but in my case I like to have all my installation images um, and installers in one place and then give it a logical name uh, that you will remember that you know what this is. I also like to suffix my installation images with .zip so that I know it's an installation image. Uh, another best practice is you can put the version numbers in there um, and what the platform is. And in this case, uh, we are installing to a Microsoft Windows platform. But there are, are, are other platforms that you could use. As you can see, there are, there's Linux, um, there's AIX currently, um, and HP. So select the appropriate platform for your particular system. Then you'll be prompted for a sign-in into Empower on every account. There is there are a few people that are authorized to download software. Typically it will be an admin, a DBA, some of those folks. So usually it will be one of those team members that has the ability to download and create images. Then the next prompt you'll be asked to prompt, you'll be prompted to select the version, the specific version of the software AG products that you want to download. In this case, we're going to do the 2021 20, October release, the 10.11. Um, and what happens now in the background is the installer then logs into Empower. It compares your user ID to with the licensed products for your organization. And then it'll present you a screen or panel with all the licensed products that you are authorized to download. Um, in this case, you'll see that on the right hand side, on the top of the screen, there's a typical installations button. If you click on that button, it will try and anticipate what it is that you're trying to do. And as you see that's highlighted there, I have Natural One Application Development, Natural One Application Development Full Installation. Now, in most cases, it's probably the easiest for you to to select either one of those two options. Um, but I think for most people, Natural One Application Development Full Installation would probably be the best alternative. There are, but uh, there are some use cases where you don't want a, a predefined set of products. And what you can do then is you could 
expand on the products that you license for and choose the specific set that is applicable to you. So once you've done that, you, you confirm which software products you want to download and create an image for. Um, what the installer will do is it also look for prerequisites. If you selected a product that has prerequisites that it needs, it will prompt you for that. And in most cases, it's a good idea to accept what the installer is saying that you need as a prerequisite. Um, in this, on the screen, you will then also again give, be given the opportunity to double check to make sure that you are installing the correct set of products that you wanted to download. It will give you a summary of which products have been selected and for which an image is going to be created. And now the download and image creation process is, is occurring. This typically takes 5 to 10 to 15 minutes depending on how fast your connection is to our Empower site. Once the download and image creation is complete, you will see that it will give you a summary of the products that were downloaded and, and installed into the image. So now we have an image that's downloaded and created. The next step is we're going to use the installer to use that downloaded image and then do the actual installation. So as you can see this grayed out piece is step one. We downloaded the installer from Empower. Step two, which we just did, is we created an image from Empower. And step three, now we're going to use this image to do the actual installation. We start the installer again, but this time under the Images tab, we say Install from an image. So note that this is different from the previous time where we created the image. Now we're going to navigate to where the image is stored. And we can do a validate image so that it will check the image to make sure that it is a valid image. It does some check some calculations and it will tell you whether the image is valid. In this case, I ran the validation step and you see it says it's not missing any files or check and the checksums match. Once you're happy with that, you then decide on where you want this software to be installed on your C drive. Now this is a Windows example so all the nomenclature that I will be using will be related to Windows but adapt if you're using Linux or some other operating system. In this case we're going to go to C colon slash natural one nine one four. Now you can do different things yeah depending on what your best practices are on your particular site. Um, some teams like to use software AG 10 and underscore 11 or whatever makes sense to you but the thing to remember is that it's good to create a separate installation directory for each new version that you install. Uh, we don't really support over installation of new versions onto old versions so it's a best practice to have a new installation directory for a new version. Um, then you'll see that it will default to the local host which is your local machine and Another thing to remember is you want to probably have a unique name in your start menu so that you have a, a reminder that this is the version 914, not 913 or 912 or, or 8 dot whatever that you had before. So as I said before, there are many ways to logically separate out the various versions. In this case, as you can see, I had a 913, now I'm installing 914. Uh, you can change that to whatever makes sense to you and uh, is memorable to you so that you can have a, a logical way to have your different versions installed. Now you've selected the image, you've told it where you want it to install, it will now give you the option of selecting various components. There are some cases where you don't want to select all the components, for example in this case you see some of the entire X components were deselected. Uh, I'm just doing that for an example. Typically you would want to install all the components, but in this case you can change the installation to suit your needs. Uh, you have to have a license file available, so make sure that you have a license file available from your admin 
um, and make sure that you're able to get to it. So navigate to the license file. If the license file isn't valid, you will receive a warning once it tries to load the license file. Again, you'll be presented a summary of all the products that you're about to install and click next and click install at least and installation will now start and it'll run for probably 10 minutes or so depending on how fast your system is and it'll do it'll create the folders and directories it'll do the shortcuts for you and it'll set everything up for you once the installation is finished you'll be presented with a summary of all the products that were installed um, a lot of folks like to take a screen print of this so that they have they have a, a evidence of what was installed so they're just a reminder if you can't remember exactly what was installed you can go back to the screen print and say oh I remember I installed these products but we didn't install entire X for whatever reason so this just gives you a visual reminder of what was installed All right, so that was the installation now the last step is we're going to validate the installation first is to find where designer or natural one was installed so you'll go to your start menu and then navigate to where you created the group the group on your start menu in this case I have it under natural 1914 and you'll see there's a new option there software AG designer 10.11 I've highlighted it there for you so you click on that um, and you'll see it'll start up and you will be pre presented with a screen that allows you to choose a workspace uh, there are ways to upgrade your workspace from a previous version I'll cover that in a future video but suffice to say is that in this case we want to have a unique workspace name so um, you'll, you'll enter that it'll default it to you to your username and then it'll give you a workspace typically using the default is okay in most, okay, uh, most cases you can click on use this as the default and do not ask again um, if you're only going to use one workspace but typically I don't do it that way um, because I'm often using multiple workspaces but depending on your work style is you can click on that use this as the default when you start up natural one for the first time you'll be presented with this screen which is a welcome screen you can close that screen um, once you've looked at all the content here this just gives you an introduction as to what it is that natural one can do for you on the left hand side you'll see there are some there's some information about entire X in this case we did install entire X uh, with natural one with the entire X components that come with natural one and on the right hand side you'll see there's some information that tells you more about natural one including some really useful tutorials so if you need to natural one this is a good place to explore and do, do some tutorials You'll see that there is a it shows you how to open up the natural one perspective there's a hello world application there's a travel application natural for Ajax if you're interested in that so there's a few ways to learn more about natural one then another way to validate your application is to click on the about button the top of the screen to the right hand side and look at the version numbers here and you should see that this matches what you downloaded from the, the image that you created from Empower. You can also look at the version number uh, and the Software AG Designer features and this is the actual core component of, of Designer that makes Natural One work. Um, to get to your perspective, your Natural One perspective, you click on Window, Perspective, Open Perspective and then look for natural one perspective then it'll give you the natural one perspective so that you can use natural one for your future development and as you can see on my screen there we have a natural one perspective that is blank because we haven't connected to any natural development servers yet but this will show you what your natural one perspective should look like when you're complete as you can see on the top right hand side of the page there's a little blue icon white and blue icon that is an N in the middle of it and that's your natural one perspective so that if you're in a different perspective you want to go back to the natural one perspective you simply click on the natural one button there so what we accomplished in this session was we've created the local image from empower 
we validated the image, we installed Natural One using the installation image, we verified that the image was installed. In the next module, we will then do the setup of Natural One, we'll do an overview of the Natural One perspective, and we'll discuss some troublesho troublesho troubleshooting tips. So I hope you enjoy using Natural One and uh, that you're very productive. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day. Bye-bye.